Hello, Ducks fans. Welcome to another episode of the Quack Report. My name's Carter, and I'm joined by Nate, as always here. And we're going to talk some Anaheim Ducks hockey here in a little bit, a few minutes. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be exciting because, you know, it's not very often we get to talk about Ducks wins. It's not very often we get to talk about two Ducks wins. Um, so, you know, we've got a lot to look forward to. On, uh, it's on gonna be episode. a good time. Yeah, yeah. First time the Ducks have had a. I don't know. You, you can consider two games in a row a win streak, I guess. But a lot of people can, think yeah. do three. This is the first yeah. time the Ducks have had a win streak all year. Yeah, I got some stats on that. If you actually want to start with that, I was gonna. Absolutely, later, you know I can, love numbers. You know yeah. I love numbers. Yeah, me too. Except so, in my math class. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, really. What, what what do you like about numbers? Oh, just like hockey numbers, you mean? Hockey numbers, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. There's I thought a you just meant like numbers class. in I'd general. I'd be down for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day. One day. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, with uh, the Ducks going on a now three-game win streak as of right now, going into the All-Star break and their bye week, I guess. Um, I looked back when the last three-game win streak, three-game plus win streak was for the Anaheim Ducks. Do you have a guess when that was, Nate? Oh, my God. I want to say it was January of, like, 22. <laughs> um, It was longer ago than January of 22. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So it's been it's been over a year. And uh, and I, I'd actually totally forgot about this as well, uh, but it was, uh, I, I guess, that eight-game win streak we had last season, like, kind of right at the beginning where we were like, oh, fuck, maybe this team's like for real. Yeah. And they just like shit the bed. <laughs> Remember when that was a thing? <laughs> yeah, right. Remember when we had hope? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, first game of that streak was October 31st and it went until November 16th for those eight games. And that was games 10 to 17 of the season last year. And we haven't had three in a row since then. Not since then. So it's been 15 months because we're at the end of January. <laughs> So yeah, holy shit! And then, <laughs> and then before that, the last time the Ducks had won three games in a row or more was all the way back to the very beginning of the nineteen twenty season when we started this show. <laughs> the Ducks won their very first three games of the season, October third to October eighth, and then they didn't win three games in a row the whole rest of the season. They didn't do it in 2021, and they didn't. And then they did the eight game win streak in 21 22. And then this season, we're in January, games uh, 48 to 50 is when they did their next three game win streak. And of course, they do it the season that we almost don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> because of a certain somebody. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it is entirely possible to like, make the playoffs without a three game win streak like if you just won two and then lost one like yeah. throughout the the entire season that would put you at i don't know um oopsies because i like numbers as well um what would it be Kyle? like 108 points so yeah very much okay. and yeah if yep. you've done that yeah <laughs> So, yeah, pretty. So, like, it, it doesn't like tell the whole story, but obviously the Ducks haven't made the playoffs, so we didn't do that. <laughs> we just went on like really long losing streaks, and then occasionally won a game or two. Yeah, this team just baffles me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like almost nuts. every episode now. It feels like I'm just like, huh? All right, they did this thing, or they haven't done this thing in a while, or this yeah. or that, or you know, somebody's, you know broken a scoreless drought or something like that yeah <laughs> oh yeah we definitely have multiple... interesting the last few episodes that's for sure <laughs> oh definitely yeah we've definitely had multiple two game win streaks over the last couple seasons oh wait oh shit. yeah okay actually go back to 20 to yeah 2020 to 21 which remember was a shortened season of only yeah. 56 games the ducks only won two games in a row four times that season damn and then last season seven times 
having won at least two or more. Yeah, and then this season, I think we've only done it a few times. Is that right? Yeah, I think four, maybe five. Uh, five. I'll, I'll, five I'll if you ahead. include this streak, yeah. Yeah. Well, Damn, look at me go. Yeah, it's pretty good. I do know something. I do you know do. something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm only seeing four. Where's the other one? What? I'm just doing like a command F on hockey reference, and it's... Uh... Oh, yeah. What? Two. Where's the first one? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, oh, okay. It's saying because we won uh, two one against just the way it, it's like tight. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So yes, we've we've only had four two game win streaks. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. Um. So yeah, those are those are the fun stats I have, I guess, for <laughs> for the Rucks going streaking. Maybe we can maybe we can get four. I don't know. It's it's hard to predict because we've got so long before our next game. But yeah, I mean, we can rearrange how this show goes then yeah that next game is dallas which like, yeah, we're, we're going chaos mode dive. we're going end to the beginning <laughs> yeah we're not going to dive too deep into it like we'll do it closer to the actual game like i guess that would be the next sunday or the next monday episode yeah um but yeah both of those games were shutouts five nothing for the stars on december 1st and then two nothing mm -hmm. for the ducks on january 4th Okay. Which, if I remember off the top of my head, was John Gibson's first shutout in 18 months. Yep. If I have that stat right in my head. So, yeah, I can't remember if it was 15 or 18, but it, it yeah, was a long time, anyways. So, needless to say, I have no idea what to expect out of that game. Yeah, not a clue. Um, I mean, yeah, we could do a, we could do a score prediction now since we're talking about it, <laughs> unless you want to save it. I don't know. I've got it up here. Let's save it. Let's save it. Let's save it. Okay. Okay. But um, I'm feeling guess... like. I'm feeling like it's going to be another shutout for the stars, though, because Ottinger oh, yeah. should be going to the All Star game. Yeah, we'll, we'll just like... be a little salty about the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just put a a dash zero in there as well. Yeah, just, just to good. start things off, just because you Sounds can't go back good. on it now. You've already said it. So yeah. Um, just while we have this open, though, I guess we could take a look at <laughs> our own personal prediction standings because we've predicted yeah. scores for all fifty games so far. Um, and then we I, I was originally just counting like where we get both the t the score and the team that wins right um and i've got two of them and you've got one they were so i got philly and anaheim back whenever we played them recently it wasn't too long ago and then your one was against winnipeg where you predicted 5-2 kind of early on in the season mm -hmm. and then uh, and then i broke it down into just the score or just the team so um I've got the score right twice, which I also happened to get the team right both of those times, um, and predicted the team that wins 26 out of the 50 times, so just a little over 50%, which is not actually great. <laughs> <laughs> Considering, like, I mean, can, literally I, picking I, randomly, you would theoretically get 50%. <laughs> oh, yeah, fair enough. I guess, because there's only two yeah. teams to pick from. I don't know if that's how stats work. I'm not a stats person. I'm just a accounting number person but uh and then you've got the score right three times and you've predicted the team right 29 out of 50 so almost 60 percent of the time and you've done it 26 times that we said yeah i yeah, got so it really i got it really small on my screen right now oh yeah that's fair oh yeah there so, you yeah, go. We're, we're pretty close we're pretty close damn all right but yeah you've got the score right three times just only one time you also got the team right so go jets <laughs> yeah <laughs> So yeah, that's where we're at for our score predictions. I don't know if anyone's playing along at home, but if you are, let us know how you're doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we can get into these these games here. Oh no, we're doing it fully backwards now. Actually. Fully backwards. We've got to commit to it. Yeah. I don't think we can. Yeah, you're right. It's that's too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's. Uh, actually, no. Before, how are we doing for time? Oh yeah. Quickly. How was uh? How's your weekend been? It's been all right. Uh, just. Yeah, a little bit of hanging out this week was a little crazy on assignments. So, um, was still working on assignments, but just a little less uh, intensely, I guess. Yeah, to put it that way. Fair enough. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. So, it's kind of taking the moment to reset a little bit as much as I can. So, how about yeah. you? Yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, I, again, just kind of been chilling and relaxing and getting some that's chores done. Good stuff. So, yeah, good stuff. All, all the stuff I don't feel like doing. Or have time to do during the rest of the, the week, regular from week, Monday to yeah. Friday week part. So fair yeah. enough. But yeah, it's been good. Um, Sweet. I was going to ask something. I don't remember what it was. 
Oh yeah, when's the like the reading break for school? It's in like February, right? Uh yeah, it's the second or third week, I think. Yeah, spring break, or, I guess, for yeah, everyone third. down in the states. But uh, I believe it's the third week. I can double check here. Um, which is going to be really fun to come back from, because the whole point of it, you know, is for like a like a mental health break, basically for everybody. Yeah, like for students, mm-hmm. um, especially at our school, because there has been cases. We'll just mm-hmm. leave it at that. Um, yeah. Yeah, the week, uh, so yeah, uh, the 20th to the 24th is the week that I have off. Okay. Yeah, I guess we're only a, a month into the semester. I didn't even think yeah. about that. Yeah, and the week that I come back, so the week after the break, uh, I have, here, actually, let's just talk about the Monday. Okay. I have two projects and two midterms on the Monday that I come back from a week Oof. off. <laughs> followed by a case study, followed by another midterm. Followed by another midterm. Oh my god! <laughs> I I don't understand that. Like I feel yeah. like I got kind of lucky because a lot of my professors when I was in school they were like, okay, let's get the midterm done before you go. Like it's going to be a lot before you go. But but then we at least it's, at least you don't have to like back. worry about it. Like you don't have to like take a week off and then come back and try and remember everything again. Yeah. It's like, just, let's just get it out of the way now, and then you can, like, enjoy the time off, and we can start fresh with something new on the Monday we get back. So I feel yeah, like my, I got really lucky that way. Like, it didn't always work out that way, but most cases, that's what it was. Yeah, my prof said, screw you. Yeah. That that apparently. Monday, like, the Monday, the two assignments are for the same class. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's fun. Yep. Good times. So. <laughs> yeah. Looking well, forward to that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, yeah, let's, uh, I guess, get into these couple games here since they're a couple wins, and, you know, we're, we're excited to talk about some Ducks wins. Yeah, and it'll be the last couple of games that we get to talk about until... Ducks games, yeah. What, not the next Monday episode, but the but in two Wednesday episodes. Yeah, so... Wednesday, on, Thursday. Yeah, there'll be two, tuning in. two episodes where we don't talk about Ducks games specifically. Yeah. So, yeah, but let's let's get into it. So we'll start back on Tuesday where the Ducks... Or Thursday. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Thursday. Come Thursday. on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I'm in Wednesday episode mode. <laughs> Fair enough. I knew it was a day of the week that started with a T, so I was like, Tuesday. Yeah. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, there you go. But uh, yeah, Thursday where the Ducks surprisingly beat the Avalanche 5-3. to three. I don't think anybody saw that one coming. No. Yeah. I don't even think the uh, Avalanche themselves saw this coming. I don't even know if the Ducks themselves saw this coming, to be honest with you. <laughs> this no. was a very one-sided game. If you're not just looking at the final score, if you're looking at everything else, mm-hmm. this is a Colorado win all oh, day, sure. yep. every time. Uh, the Ducks outshot 44 to 32. Mm-hmm. Um the avalanche being the only ones to convert on the power play going one for two uh the ducks going over two on the power play not surprising um yeah face off percentage was in the avalanche's favor at 55 to 45 percent uh if you want to look at the uh deserve to win meter it was at 87.5 percent in favor Oof. of colorado yeah that's uh, heavily skewed <laughs> and the expected goals was 5.1 for colorado 2.4 for anaheim um wow yeah you take a look at uh like shot maps individual player uh stats and that and like everything leads to the avalanche just Mm -hmm. running away with this as everybody expects oh but yeah the uh the ducks managed to pull some man uh some magic i think get a couple lucky breaks and uh the real answer to all of this, though, is not in the defense. It's not like even the overall offense, I would say. No. It is one man by the name of Frank Vitrano. I thought you were going to say John Gibson, but yeah. Frankie. Scoring a hat trick in this game mm-hmm. just lights out. His third goal being an empty net. But uh, yeah, he was playing fantastic in this game uh, in particular there mm-hmm. um, taking a look at just the expected goal percentage. Uh, obviously he led the ducks 
Um, oh, not surprising. With, uh, yeah. with uh, 78.14%. Uh, only three guys on the Avalanche uh, were higher than him, and that was Ben Myers, uh, who was at 100%. How much did he play, though? Uh, Alex Newhook and uh, newly acquired Matt Nieto. Okay. That, that must have been their like fourth line that um, didn't play a lot. Just double check it. I'm pretty sure that was, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, no, that was kind of a. Uh, cause the Nieto, yeah, because Nie- Nieto played with Comfer and Rantanen. Okay. So it was just kind of a. Yeah. One that happened at some point, maybe. Something like that. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, though. Like, yeah, like Frank Vitrano was an awesome game, but uh, I, you are right, though, as well, saying John Gibson there. Like oh, yeah, a, he uh, was stellar. Yeah, 2.1 goal save above expected and uh, putting up a 932 save percentage. Uh, 44 shots, 41 saves on the night. So, yeah, yeah, he was playing awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't pull this up, but how many... Like the high danger, uh, high, yeah. High stuff, danger, yeah. high danger shots against was thirteen, according to Natural Stat Trick. <laughs> not, not surprising. It's the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, so. exactly. So, and uh, two of the three goals were high danger goals. The other one was a medium danger. So, yeah, no, it makes sense. But, yeah, it was. I mean, like, I, I guess thirteen high danger chances is a lot. Like, even with would you? What was it? Forty four. Shots for the Avalanche? Uh, yeah, 44 shots. Oh, but it was 13 high danger shot attempts, right? No, 13 high danger shots. Oh, just shots in general. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so like, it is kind of oh, a lot. actually made it on net, yeah. Y- yeah, but, um, you know, it, it is partially a credit, I guess, to the defense that, like, no low danger shot attempts got through, like, it was, or, like, got, went in, sorry. Like, um, like, the defense just positionally was, like decent enough that they let Gibson handle those shot attempts. And then the high danger ones that obviously the avalanche are going to get because it's the Colorado avalanche. I don't care where they are in the standings. They have a high powered offense and we have a not great defense, but like, I don't know. Like, I I guess that part is more on John Gibson that they like that he stopped those. But um, Mm. I I guess like the defense clearing away rebound, like I don't really know exactly what a high danger shot is classified as on these websites but i'm assuming like you can have a high danger shot attempt that's not just like a rebound into a wide open cage right like it would be like a, a shot from the hash marks but with like no but no traffic in front would be like a high danger shot attempt right yeah um i can pull up what the exact definition is uh i can try to explain it but i just suck with defining i guess yeah um like, I, like if I saw a high danger shot attempt, I'd be like, that is one. But like in terms of what they actually classify it as, like in this certain area of the ice, um, like is it the shooter? Like is if it's Nathan McKinnon from anywhere compared to Matt Nieto from anywhere, like is Nathan McKinnon's just always a high danger shot attempt? Like, yeah. Um. Oh, I think it was Jay Fresh had a great explanation of it, but I can't find it offhand at least okay or just here there you go like a scoring chance allowed that is highly likely to result in a goal being scored okay so yeah it kind of depends then like if it's yeah yeah like if it's a one-timer from nathan mckinnon like that's it's got a high likelihood of going in yeah whereas like anybody like a a power marks is a high danger one or like yeah yeah, power play attempt by Alex Ovechkin from his office kind of thing. Well, that's just a guaranteed goal. That's yeah, like, exactly. It's, it's not even a high danger one. It's just a guarantee. So, yeah. yeah but, um, yeah, I mean, it's the Avalanche are going to do what they're going to do. But I think, like, the, some credit is should be given to, like, the Anaheim defense for um, preventing it from being just, like, a shelling of John Gibson. But he also did play out of his mind, so... Oh yeah, yeah. No, they definitely did uh, did well, at least to to, to say the least here. Uh, if we're taking a yeah. look at specific pairings, um, yeah, Fowler, Kulikov, and Vakanine and Klingberg uh, led for time on ice. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't have the greatest on ice goals against or expected goals against. Um, 
Father Kulikov was expected to be 1.4, um, mm-hmm. but it had nothing actually against. So, so there you go. Good. Credit yeah. to John Gibson. Uh, Vakanine and Klingberg was 1.1 rounded uh, expected against, and they had two against. So that one's maybe a little bit more rough, but mm-hmm. um, Benoit and uh, White there playing 1058, um, okay. being on the ice for a goal, not allowing anything. And uh, a point four three nine on the night, um, which for just that's... under eleven minutes, that's pretty damn good actually for like a bottom pairing uh, pair. Yeah. So I like seeing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, for sure. Um. Yeah. So really, just like you said, a game that we shouldn't have won, but found a way to win, and it, it was really just like good performances from Frank Vitrano and John Gibson. Yeah, the team overall definitely pressed like really hard at the end of the second to get that second Vitrano goal as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just kind of carried that into the third period, which was nice yeah. to see. We don't normally see that out of this Anaheim Ducks team, to be honest. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. And uh, you had there as well that like you just saw that they kind of locked it down as much as they could, kind of like you were yeah. saying already. Yeah, like it, I, I guess like the definition normally of locking it down is like oh shots were like 16 to 5 and like offensive zone pressure was like 15 minutes and you yeah which, which was not like the five, case but no yeah not the case in this one the, the the avalanche still got 13 shots against in the third period there. yeah but considering how like the avalanche played and like they're they're the, they're the defending stanley cup champions like they know how to press in a third period game that they're down to come out and win it like the avalanche had or the Ducks had every reason to lose this game to the Avalanche. Like, yeah. this could have been 5-3 the other way. It could have been 7-3. It could have been 5-2, 6-2, like, whatever. And we would just been like, yeah, it's the Colorado Avalanche against the Anaheim Ducks. Of course that's what's going to happen. Yeah, but, can you, sorry, can you pull back, actually, the uh, score predictions? I want to see what we predicted yeah, yeah. for this game. Yeah. Um, we had, I had, Razor, we both predicted losses. We did, yeah. I had 4-1 for Colorado, and you had 5-2. And the final was 5-3 for Anaheim. Yeah. So Now, yeah. I, I am also trying to keep in mind that this Avalanche team is still depleted. Mm-hmm. They're still missing Gabe Landeskog. They're still missing Josh Manson on the back end, which we yeah. know what that guy can bring, obviously. Was, was Kale McCarr still out for this game, or did he... No, he came back for that uh, one. Yeah, I believe and, McCarr yeah, was... That was his first one back. I yeah, remember McCarr that. was yeah. back for that one, where he put up uh, an assist on 26 minutes and 12 seconds. Jesus. God damn. Um, they're still missing Bowen Byram, uh, Darren Helm, and Valerie Nichushkin. So, so like, just like a, throughout the lineup, they're missing guys. They're missing like, guys, yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, but I mean, when, it, like, just in a vacuum, when if somebody said to me, like, oh, yeah, it was 3 2 heading into the third period, and then it was 5 3. Um, You're assuming the that's other way. Colorado. Yeah, winning. exactly. Like, yeah. but so the Ducks kind of did everything they needed to. Like, they just played a simple game, they capitalized on their chances, and they, like, the Avalanche still got their chances, but they very much limited the chances that they could have got like this easily the the avalanche could have done what they had done for the first period and Mm -hmm. mostly the first period partially the second period as well and and shots could have just been like disgusting like 18 to 2 like we've seen that happen to the ducks in third periods even like if they're Mm -hmm. going into the third period winning like other teams will just run them over and there's nothing they can do about it but the ducks really did play like just a solid simple game to you know, prevent the abs from running away with this one in the third. Yeah. Um, they to look through the, uh, the penalty logs here. Got reminded of this. What did you think about the delay of game penalty on John Gibson in this game? The delay of game. Remind me what happened. I honestly, I don't, remember. Uh, John Gibson pushed off the post to like 99% of goalies do in the NHL. Oh, right. And the net yeah. came loose and they gave him a delay of game for it. Yeah, that's I've seen that a few times on in various games throughout the NHL this year. Yeah, like, with like Anaheim, I've seen it with Edmonton. I've seen it just yeah. randomly in like a, I don't know, Toronto, Montreal game. Like I, I've just seen those happen. And it's like, yes, I'm sure there is goaltenders that they they do that. They push extra hard off of the post to get a whistle. But I don't think that 
any of the ones that have been called this year that I've at least seen should be a delay of game, especially with how shitty the pegs are. Like there's something going on with the pegs this year. I I don't know if they've recently changed them or if they've changed the way they drill them into the ice. And like, I I get that it's for player safety. So if someone goes head first or shoulder first or neck first, leg first, whatever into the post, they don't like injure themselves. Yeah. They're supposed to pop off and yeah, but yeah, like that's the first one I've actually seen called for that. Mm-hmm. Everything else has just been kind of like, oh, okay, like, like keep an eye on it kind of thing. And there's certain buildings, especially this year, that have been like people have been keeping an eye on, right? Anaheim yeah. is one of them, but they were in Colorado for this game, so you can't even use that argument. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in Toronto is another one. Yeah. Um, and uh, if, if you want to talk about a goalie in particular that's been uh, an eye has been kept on, it's Matt Murray for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, for, for this case, I like, and I tried to step back and go, okay, from an official's perspective. Right. And I'm like, I still don't see how you can make that call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a, that was a pretty bad call. Not going to lie. Yeah. It's the only way I can justify it is if they like, know they missed something earlier or because game management and they're trying to even out the power. And that's not the even a and justification for no, me. It's game not. management is the most ridiculous thing i have ever heard as an official that's not your responsibility as a official to manage the game that's not your job no your, your, your no, exactly. job is but to like make sure that the game it, but it happens briefly. the thing is that it yeah. happens and we all know what happens so like it is something to consider but yeah it's yeah I, I would i have a hard time believing that that should have been a delay of game so yeah that was but whatever a, a brutal call luckily uh if, if i'm not mistaken we did get through that one we weren't that was the goal against on the power play. Do I have that uh, right? That I don't remember. Uh, second period, 14-37. Yeah, no, that, yeah, we, we got through that one, luckily. Yeah, okay. So, um, You just had one more note here about uh, Mason McCavish. Yeah, what a release that kid has. It's so good. Like, we saw it in the first nine games that he played in the league, but, like, since then... He just like breaks it out and you're just like, damn, that's like, it yeah. just never gets old. It's just so impressive. Yeah. And like, it wasn't even like a full screen, I guess that Francois had to, uh, had to take on it. Right. Like you can, uh, they, they showed an angle after that was kind of like the behind the net camera. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's not really a whole lot of like a screen there. Right. It's just the one guy, but he's, he's more in front of McTavish than he is the, the puck line. Yeah. And or the, like, I guess like the like the side of the puck, yeah. and um, yeah, I, I have to agree with uh, the Ducks broadcast of just like it just caught him by surprise, mm-hmm. kind of thing more than anything. Yeah. But like, just the fact that he was able to rip that shot as well from that spot and beat Francois on it, yeah, that was a wicked shot. That uh, yeah, gave the the Ducks the lead and puts a game winner in Mason McTavish's pocket. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess it is. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really excited that Mason McTavish is actually like um, capitalizing more on the shots that he's taking out because like we've seen him take some really good shots, like especially earlier in the season. But like yeah. they would like go just wide, or the goalie would like somehow make a phenomenal save. Uh, but now like his, uh, I guess like like and so like he just kind of seemed unlucky to start the season but now it's kind of balancing back out and like yeah um and coming back to like where he should be based off of how good his shot is and how many shots he's taking and the ice time he's getting like on the power play and stuff so um yeah i'm I'm really really excited to see uh his shot just develop over the next couple of years and i think potentially like in his prime we could see him win a rocket richard trophy That'd be sweet. Yeah. Or at least be in contention. In, in for contention, it. yeah. Like we could be talking about him as a potential sleeper pick for uh for DraftKings with promo code THPN uh, someday. Not not this that year, maybe, but right. uh, someday, I think. So yeah. That would be a okay. Um so this season the NHL average for shooting percentage is nine point one. Okay. And our boy Mason McTavish is shooting over that percentage at 9.3 oh nice yeah that's goals good. on 108 shots um 28 points on the year now oh damn it's doing all right so yeah yeah, yeah that's pretty good 
you know, and just yeah, that was, his, uh, that was his first game, uh, his first game winner of the year as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I um just while we're talking about him, and because we haven't really talked about the rookie scoring race in a while, I'm just pulling up the uh, the rookie scoring leaders here just to see where they're all at for this season, and just in terms of points, that is. Uh oh, boy, Maddie Beniers, 36 points in 47 games. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's kind of really gone good. off. <laughs> yeah, followed by Cole Perfetti, uh, 29 points in 46 games with uh winnipeg there he's uh must have really taken off the last few games because he was had like i hadn't really heard about much about him this season like i mm -hmm. knew he was playing but i didn't think he was really in the race and then mason mctavish at 28 points in uh they have it as in 40 oh, i guess he did miss a game so yeah 49 games yeah. makes sense there yeah uh perfetti in particular has three points in uh his last five games there okay uh, a goal in two assists and then yeah. for mctavish what's his last five looking like here uh one point uh this goal against colorado in his okay. last five yeah so i mean mctavish is going to really have to go on a tear i think to make a case against maddie veneers and potentially logan thompson the goaltender in vegas there as well for um for yeah, being in the calder race but yeah, that's such an interesting conversation because you're just like you look at the stats and you go, yeah, okay, Maddie Beniers makes sense, right? Seattle's mm -hmm. pushed into a playoff spot and Beniers uh, is playing on the second line or first line, yeah, one of like, the and, three second lines they have. However, you look at it, yeah, and I'm pretty sure is in the top three for scoring, um, for uh for the Kraken. I'm just double checking that right now. Yeah, yeah, he's third in scoring on the team uh, with his 36 points. Um, only three points behind the Kraken leader, Andre Burakovsky at 39. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then you take a look at Logan Thompson and what he's been able to do this season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on a Vegas team that like, I kind of questioned the goaltending at the start of the year, right? Like, oh, for sure. Not saying that like Logan Thompson wasn't going to be good or anything like that because we saw the, the flash of it at the end of mm. uh, last season when he had to step in. But just more the idea of, okay, you got an unproven goalie, like just hasn't had a whole lot of playing time. And Aiden Hill, who's been around the league for quite a bit, but hasn't done great over his career kind of thing overall. Yeah. And oh boy, has Logan Thompson really just accepted the role, I guess, kind of as a starter. I don't know. He's kind of in that weird area between a starter and a 1A, played He's... in 35 games. Yeah, and Started well, Aiden, Aiden Hill's played 18. Um, yeah. Where, yeah, well, Thompson's gone 19, 13, and 0 uh, with a 269 goals against and a 913 save percentage. Um, and then I just want to double check. Money Puck says his goals are save above expected is here. Yeah. Um,. He'll go with a minimum. How many games has he played? Thirty-five. Okay, he'll go with a minimum of thirty games. Okay, that's about like a starter, like kind of traditional starter number. Yeah. Um. Seventeenth out of twenty, negative two point six. Oh, interesting. Oh, really? He's a negative. And how many is that? Twenty goalies that have played over thirty. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we got like the top 32 goalies, I guess, like, you, um, if you went down to 22, that would give us the top, uh, 32, well, top 33 goalies, but yeah. And he ends at 26th there. Oh, wow. But it, it becomes like a massive drop off. So Thompson's at negative 2.6 and then Billy Huso at negative 4.1. Mm -hmm. uh, our our own John Gibson, negative 7.9. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's, Jordan, he's continued to improve that every time we talk about it. So it, it improves and then it goes back. It improves and then it goes back. Well, yeah. Um, Jordan Bennington at uh, negative 10, who was pulling shit again the other night. I forget who against. Oh, I'm um, surprised. I think it was against Colorado, actually. Yeah, because I think because Georgiev went to center ice. Oh, really? So Bennington had his chance. Ah, and he wussed out. Nice. 
the refs did tell Georgiev right away, go back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, then James Reimer, negative 10.5. Jack Campbell, negative 11, which he's improving that, and he's done pretty well, if, I, if memory serves me correctly, over the last while. Uh, Jonathan Quick, negative 14.5. Spencer Martin, negative 18.6. Okay. And bless Vancouver fans who are still chanting Bruce, there it is at uh, Vancouver Canucks games. <laughs> are they actually? Really? They are. Yep. Wow. That's funny. Because um, what, Rick Tockett's first game back, or first game was Monday, I think. So we, we've been through yes. a week now of, oh, yeah. uh, of Rick Tockett and the Vancouver Canucks where they have gone. Not saying that it was going to be just like a miraculous flip around kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, They've gone two and one, but the two wins came against Chicago, a five, two win and Columbus, a five, two win, um, lost to Seattle six, (laughs) one. Okay. So, Hmm. um, I was just looking up here for rookie qualifications. So it's says to be considered a rookie, a player must not have played in more than 25 NHL games in any preceding seasons, uh, nor in six or more NHL games in any of or in each of any two preceding seasons any player at least 26 years of age is not considered a rookie do you know if that's just for players or does that also apply for goalies also applies for goalies it's the same cutoff they don't like yeah adjust it because they don't as, as far as i'm aware games. yeah okay yeah that's what i thought but i, w- I wasn't totally sure so um yeah because that's why matt murray was able to be a rookie two years in a row with pittsburgh Oh, okay. Like one of the few like... rookies to win two Stanley Cups. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was just taking a look at the rookie goalie numbers this year, and I, I noticed like Dan Vladar on the list, and I was like, well, he played quite a bit last year too. Like he was a backup all season, but I guess he just didn't hit that cutoff, so he's still considered a rookie this year. Yeah, um, I want to say he played about 20 games. Oh, okay. Uh, Pete. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Peter Kachetkov is a rookie yeah. this year, and I thought he played quite a bit last year, but I, I could be wrong. Oh, uh, oh no, yeah, he only played like three games last year. He might have played in the playoffs yeah. more. Oh, yeah, he played For four games. In the Carolina, playoffs. right? Yeah, it was, it was the For playoffs Carolina. that he went off. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, where are we going here? Yeah, and then I was curious about Dostal as well, just because uh, – didn't want him to this to be like considered his rookie season but yeah he's only played like seven games or something oh yeah he'll be he'll be fine until uh until next season yeah so yeah um so yeah really i mean you could kind of make a case for three rookie goalies to like be potentially in there for the rookie scoring race and logan thompson Stuart skinner and uko pekka lukanen depending on how many games he plays for the rest of the season, but so yeah, could, I forgot that to make a case for both. Yeah. I forgot Pekka Lukanen is considered a, a rookie Stuart mm-hmm. Skinner as well. Yeah. I don't exactly. know if, he's, if you said his name. Sorry. I did. I, yeah. I, I that. Yeah. Thompson Skinner and Lukanen are the, yeah. the top three in games, uh, games played. And then, uh, yeah. And just in terms of save percentage out of those three, Oh God, now I'm getting oh, I'm sorting by, Save percentage was a bad idea. Here we go. Uh, Skinner has a 914. Kachekov in 19 games has a 913. Thompson a 913. I don't know if Kachekov's going to play much more this season, though, since Anderson and Rant are back. Um, so, yeah, depends on injuries for them. And then uh, Lukanen is a 901 save percentage, good for 13th among rookies. But I mean, uh, Five, six, seven of the guys ahead of him have played less than 10 games, so you can kind of count mm. them out. So, so yeah, I don't know. The The rookie scoring race is going to be interesting this year because it's not just players, I don't think. so. Yeah, like goalies have a good shot at it this year, actually. Yeah. But we know that the NHL sells on scoring, mm-hmm. not on not on goalies, goal not allowing scoring. So yeah. it, it's more than likely going to be veneers. So we, we can yeah. still hope for McTavish, but uh, realistically, there should be a few goalies that are more in the conversation than they are. For sure, yeah. And I mean, there's still 30 games left to go, right? Like, um, yeah. say Matty Beneers falls off a cliff, or, or even, like, hopefully not, but if he gets injured, like, it's 
it's very hard to make a case for uh, the rookie scoring title when you've only played what whatever he's at forty seven games. For yeah, yeah, so and I like I kind of doubt that he does because I believe I, I think it's similar uh, ways of figuring out between Dom decision of the Athletic and Money Puck, mm -hmm. um, but both are projecting that uh, Seattle has the easiest schedule for the rest of the season. Yeah, so. Um, and then for, yeah. And then, I mean, McTavish could also pop off too and just like really make a case for taking over the scoring race. Like, yeah. Which would be fantastic. Obviously not yeah. going to, not going to, not going to hate that at all. <laughs> yeah. Like right now, I think the ducks are really trucking along. Um, then like starting to develop some chemistry and, and play together well as a team. And I think McTavish has been benefiting from that and just like actually having consistent line mates as well. Cause we're finally Kind yeah. of healthy, knock on wood. Um, but then the trade deadline is going to happen, and then the team, who knows what's going to happen. Like, the team might just be blown to smithereens, and then who knows what happens for the rest of the season. And it would be very hard yeah. for McTavish to maybe score because he's playing all over the lineup with various guys and stuff like that. But, yeah, we'll see. It's it's going to be interesting to see what happens anyways. so That has been one nice thing that we've had some consistency in lines because I mm -hmm. remember like last year or even like early this season, right? Like yeah. even trying to find chemistry, he wasn't like Eakins wasn't giving enough time for it. Right. Yeah. It was like every game or every two games, you had a completely different like shakeup of the line. It's like, okay, like how are guys supposed to figure this out? So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I just wanted to throw out one more thing there just on the goalie discussion for the Calder because yeah, sure. just being a goalie. Um, obviously I'm going to try to pump them up as much as I can. Yeah. Um, but even just Dan Vladar there for the Calgary Flames, like not trying to make this like a, a whole Flames thing, but he actually is doing something pretty crazy right now, uh, tying the Flames franchise record held by Mike Vernon uh, for the 88-89 season, the season that they oh, won the Stanley Cup. And uh, Brian Elliott from the 2016-2017 season has, uh, so Vladar has tied the franchise record of 13 games without a regulation loss. Oh, damn. So he's doing well in Calgary as well. So yeah, and I mean a lot of that I think comes just from opportunity of Markstrom being awful this year. Like he has not been. We can we can have a conversation yeah. about that off air. I don't yeah. put that on Markstrom necessarily. Well, no, you can't. But like he's he's also not. Yeah, I mean, Markstrom and Vladar are playing in front of the same team or behind the same team, so it's yeah different but yeah you're right we could talk about it off air because we still it's, have the coyotes game to get to yeah eventually, to, to, but. to make it really simple it's the same way that anaheim plays different i feel like in front of anthony stellars that's true the, yeah, the calgary kind of do yeah. that but just a little bit more of a separation so yeah that's fair but, um yeah. yeah uh before we get into the coyotes game just because um after that we don't really have a whole lot else to talk about um so it'll kind of be the end of the episode we'll just i guess split up the two game talks with uh some words from our friends here over at DraftKings Sportsbook. And as well, if you're watching the video, you've probably already noticed a uh, another sponsor. old old but new logo uh, backed down in the corner of the video here with uh, Raycon. So you can go to buyraycon.com slash THPN for a sweet deal on some Raycon earbuds. And Nate will, uh, well, Nate from the past will have a, a sweet deal there. But yeah, we're going to have two sponsors for the show, at least for this month and uh yeah we'll see you guys in just a couple minutes here to talk about the coyotes game ducks coyotes game i should say nba fans it's time to bring the hoops action to the palm of your hand with DraftKings sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the nba this week new customers can bet five dollars and win two hundred dollars in free bets instantly Plus, for a limited time, all new and existing customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app today, opt in, and place a same-game parlay on any NBA game. And if it doesn't hit, you'll get a free bet back. So, what are you waiting for? Download the app now and sign up with the code THPN. New customers can bet $5 on the NBA and get $200 in free bets instantly. Again, that's code THPN, as in the Hockey Podcast Network, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void in Ohio. See show notes for details.
This time of year, everyone's talking about making big changes, which is all well and good, but most of the time, pretty unrealistic. You've probably found that the smallest changes to your routine can actually make the biggest impact. In the same way, you don't have to break the bank to make a big deal purchase. Even the smallest things can be part of a big change if it's something you use every day. Just like Raycon earbuds. Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point, so you can build great habits without breaking the bank. Whether you're looking for a pair of everyday earbuds, low latency gaming headphones, or a speaker with a battery that will last all night at your next party, Raycon's got you covered. And yep, Raycon start at half the price of other premium audio brands. That means you don't have to choose between products. You can get one of each, or a pair and a spare, and still pay less than you would with some of the other guys. Even if you know you'll love your Raycons, Raycon wants to make sure you feel great about your purchase. They offer buy now, pay later options, and every purchase has an easy and free return guarantee. Ready to buy something small with a big impact? Go to buyraycon.com slash THPN today to get 15% off your Raycon order. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash THPN to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash THPN. All right, so let's talk uh, Ducks Coyotes here. Ducks winning 2 1 in overtime in that game. And uh, well, it was a Ducks win. It was a different kind of Ducks win compared to the one against the Avalanche that we talked about in the first half of the episode, just because, you know, it was against the Coyotes, not the Avalanche. They're a very different team, to, to put it nicely. Yeah, and uh, a weirdly lower score and going to overtime. Yeah. It's weird stuff. <laughs> it is weird yeah uh yeah but uh we, we obviously talked about the coyotes on the last episode since we played them just on was that that was that get, was the game that was on tuesday, tuesday. Right? yeah yeah and um again we both predicted anaheim wins for this one uh you had three two so you i, th I think you even said overtime as well or maybe you just said not sure about that but yeah, yeah. and then i had four one for anaheim so. so I got the spread right, just the wrong score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, we both had Anaheim for that, of course, because it's Arizona. So, yeah, but it was um, kind of, I guess, what everything you would expect from a game between the Ducks and the Coyotes. Like there was very physical. There was some a, a lot of speed. I guess maybe not a lot of scoring, but there was like definitely good chances. Like this was absolutely a goaltending battle between Gibson and especially in and overtime. Ingram, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, there was fantastic saves on both sides there yeah like I, don't, I feel like you don't normally see like oh yeah here's like the full overtime posted for the ducks and coyotes on the sportsnet youtube channel not very often no. not something i had on my 23 bingo card no. not gonna lie so <laughs> <laughs> not not early 23 maybe late 23 yeah maybe so like this is i don't know the, the more games that we see against the ducks and the coyotes makes me excited for the future when both of these mm -hmm. teams are good. Ideally. Ideally. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. like both these teams, like they they, they talk a lot about how, which it's not wrong, how rivalries are built in the playoffs. This mm -hmm. is like, this is like, it's, it's really being built in the regular season that I feel like could blow up once these teams are both making the playoffs consistently. Oh, for sure. It's definitely like similar vibes to, I, I guess for us, like a battle of Alberta or, um, yeah. you know, back in the day, like a Anaheim LA, um, or really just any of the three California teams playing against each other, like, uh, battles of New York, like th those kind of ones where the teams just hate each other so much. And that even a regular season game has like a lot of chippiness to it. And like a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, just com competitiveness especially with the fans too and like it's even like a home game for the ducks it's like still half the people there are like la or san jose fans like it's just a very different atmosphere and i feel like we very much got that with the ducks and coyotes this week yeah it's been it's been interesting and yeah just the fact that they got scheduled that close together mm -hmm. uh as well definitely yeah. helps that and that if i'm not mistaken that happened last year also they were like really close together games, so things things boiled over one game into the next, and potentially, yeah. I'm trying to remember 
if uh if that happened because i know it was the end of the season we played arizona yeah and that was yes yeah, so we beat them five nothing on april 1st and then when was the last time we played them here i guess i could do a command f instead of relying on my eyeballs <laughs> um but yeah, so that's the first two games of this season done now. Um, and the next one against the Coyotes won't be until April 8th. But um, as we'll get into... Kind of the end of the season. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure both these teams are going to keep this game in mind. Oh, I'm sure there will be a little bit of carryover. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, well, we these played teams the will be well, well ready to end the season, but it won't be until after this game, I feel like now. Yeah. We played the Coyotes three times last year, uh, November 5th, December 7th. And then the five nothing win was, uh, yeah, the April first one. So they they were fairly spread out, and I, that five nothing one was the uh, whole Troy Terry and what's his uh, and, Jay Beagle, uh, Jay Beagle, yeah, incident. yeah. So I feel like it's, it's that, that, that was a whole skilling it up thing on. Yeah, it's yeah. that game last year is carried over into this year and is just more and more like. Mm-hmm. The way that this is trajecting to to myself with like is how that a word, uh, maybe I don't know. Yeah. I'm making it a word. <laughs> All words now. are made up realistically. Yeah, um, fair, fair. Kind of how like just one thing like there's a there always seems to be like a storyline coming out of each game. It feels like right. Yeah. And again, like just as both of these teams improve and get into the playoffs potentially against each other and that kind of thing. I'm kind of wondering if we're starting to look at a future. Um, remember the, like the, like, like heated, hated rivalry of the avalanche and the Detroit Red Wings, mm-hmm. in like the nineties and early thousands. Like, yeah, I kind of wonder if we're heading in that direction between the ducks and coyotes of all yeah. teams, like not even division rivals. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's- it's it's gonna be interesting to to watch these games from now on for sure. Oh, definitely. These yeah. are ones like you have to circle on your calendar. They're, they're gonna be must watch whatever games. Reason. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Especially because like, like yes, we're not playoff teams, and like both the teams know that at this point. But like because you're still so close in the standings, and like in a way, like we we talked about the whole no tanking thing um last episode and like yeah players and coaches don't tank it's the management and the owners that that do and no matter what players and coaches are always trying to win games i still think if you're a player in this game you're like this literally means nothing for playoff implications like we can't even play spoiler against the coyotes making the playoffs and or anything like that so like in a way you know that it benefits you to lose this game but you're still not going to try to lose it yeah so it's like it's interesting because like the players still know that okay if we lose this game we have a better chance of getting Connor Bedard which makes us a better team so that next time we play the the other guys then we have a better chance at just like destroying every shred of self-esteem that they have left and you know making them hate their lives and just cry themselves to sleep afterwards if if that's what motivates you <laughs> uh, so like there is that motivation to lose but they still don't so like even though so like just being that close in the standings, it's like a competition to win a game that you don't want to win in a way. And that's what yeah. makes you like competitive. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I'm like, like we don't see this kind of, future, yeah. Yeah. We don't see this kind of fire. Like, or we didn't between the avalanche and the ducks on Tuesday because like the teams were so far apart in the standings, yeah. but like, or not, here, like, not the, like there, there was a little bit, but it was, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. like a normal amount of fighting, like where, or like chippiness, I guess, in a way. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I guess this, uh, like the Ducks and the Coyotes, think of it instead of like, oh, we want to lose this game, but so that we can get a better player. Uh, I guess maybe they think of it as like, oh, we don't want to be the worst team in the league. Like, we don't want to be the laughing stock of the NHL. So if we can beat a bad team, then it means that we're not the worst team yeah it's like a little bit of like holding on to whatever pride you have left like i'm trying not to sound like a dick towards the the ducks but like they know they're not a good team but if they can beat the coyotes it's like okay we're at least only the second worst team you know yeah 
I mean, right now they're the third worst. Yeah. Col- yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Columbus yeah. and Chicago are still behind them, but yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I get what you mean. Yeah. So it's maybe, maybe that's kind of the motivation there and the reason for some of the chippiness, but yeah. Um, I want to talk about the goalies again. Can I talk about oh, goalies sure. again? Of course, yeah. We we kind of touched on it already. We this just was kind of glazed an over it. Amazing yeah. goalie battle, though. Oh yeah. Like I'll I'll start with I'll start with our boy John Gibson, mm-hmm. uh, who Money Puck has uh, putting up a two point oh two goal save above expected in this game, looking just great. And uh, uh, Natural Stat Trick has. 14 high danger shots against for him only allowing one okay. goal uh the only nice. goal of the game the which a hundred percent that is a high scoring uh or high danger chance there and mm-hmm. uh here where is um i saw a great tweet uh by um a buddy of mine that does cover the coyotes uh mike gould um Oh, yeah. Just about like Nick Ritchie, who was the goal scorer for Arizona there. Mm-hmm. Um, where did it go here? Um, where? Come on. Where is well, it? Once you, once you find this here. Oh, here. Talk yeah, yeah here it is. Nick Ritchie, I got it. So. Okay. okay. So I found it. So he said, uh, Nick Ritchie is just, is such a funny player. You genuinely won't notice him even for, even once for five games on end. And then boom, suddenly the puck is on his stick with a wide open net in front of him. And he makes it look like a breeze. This happens approximately 15 times a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is true. Like even like watching it on TV, he just kind of comes out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. Which like, is, I hadn't thought about Nick Ritchie in we've, a long time. Yeah. We, and... Yeah. which is something that we are used to seeing, I guess, with the Anaheim Ducks defense. That type of collapse is mm-hmm. seen more times than you'd like to see it. Oh, of course. Um, yeah. Specifically on that, on Gibson's right side as well. Mm-hmm. So like those those right defensemen there, um, yeah. which happen to line up with, you know, guys like Klingberg and Shattenkirk and yeah so huh yeah <laughs> okay okay you can see why um, we're, we're putting some pieces together i think yeah, exactly <laughs> but uh yeah no gibson uh did fantastic in this game and uh connor ingram had a way better game this time than he did in the last one as well mm-hmm. um put up a 956 safe percentage uh 18 high danger shots against where he saved all of them um nice. and 45 shots against total uh to john gibson's 34 against mm-hmm. so yeah which it's uh, not very often the ducks out shoot a team that drastically so yeah it's, it's and interesting to see uh i had to double check because i was like so sure that that was the first time that the ducks had crossed the 40 plus shot mark in mm-hmm. like for the season yeah, uh no it? that was actually the third time we've done it okay it's it hasn't been third, very often though time, but yeah yeah, it's, it's 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 been more often as of late, which yeah. has come along with a few of the wins and just every everything else kind of coming back together a little bit. Yeah, but um, is there? Can you sort by? Oh yeah, shots four. Here we go. Yeah, um, yeah, four times we've crossed the forty goal plateau this season. Um, or forty shots. <laughs> 40 yeah, goal plateau. Fuck, yeah. that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be nice, hey? Maybe next season when we have Bedard. <laughs> You'd eliminate uh, that goal differential in two games, goddammit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, once against the Chicago Blackhawks, where we got 41. Um, once against the San Jose Sharks, which that was a, a game that went to a shootout, where we got 44. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, the 45 shots against um, Arizona, which, again, also was in overtime. Or went to overtime, and then forty three, like literally Tuesday when we played the Coyotes. So, mm-hmm. so twice against the Coyotes, once against the Sharks, and once against the Blackhawks. And for contrast, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Stop while I scroll. <laughs> 22 23 24 25 26 times we've allowed 40 or more shots on goal in 50 games <laughs> so more than half the time yeah. and like three of them have been 50 plus shots again so like it's just nuts with just pad and stats for other teams it's fantastic Good um stuff. yeah uh 
but yes, the the goalies were phenomenal. It was it, it, that was a lot of fun to watch. So, um, just in terms of shots as well, um, the we did kind of let the Coyotes come back into it in the third, just kind of in contrast to what I was talking about against the Avalanche earlier in the episode. Uh, shots were thirty five to sixteen in favor of the Ducks after the second period, and after uh, we'll, we'll say after regulation. Um, oh, I did have it up, and now it's gone. Shots after regulation. Uh, well, even just in the third period, 16 to 6 in favor of the uh, Arizona Coyotes. So uh, 41 to 32 after regulation for the Ducks. So like still, you know, a, a pretty wide margin. But just in the third period, we kind of eased back and, and let them get the majority of the chances. Whereas I think if we would pressed even just like just a hair more on the gas pedal, this game probably wouldn't have went to overtime. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. I mean, maybe 4D chess move by the team to like out, like still win so that you don't feel like the worst team, but also give the Coyotes yeah. a point so that it's like, you know, <laughs> they still are, move up a little bit in the standings and less hey, of a chance at hey, Bedard. But also you're kind of thinking like, hey, we do pretty well in overtime. <laughs> yeah. Comparatively. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. And, like, and then yeah, just what before are we, I... What are we oh, at now here for... Sorry, go go ahead. I'm gonna. F- I just wanted to double check on where we're at for. Will we be at seven regulation wins now, or six? If I'm not mistaken. Seven against the. Uh, like the one against the Avalanche. Yeah, seven regulation wins. Uh, thirteen regulation. Overtime. Or yeah, so se- yeah, seven regulation wins out of our sixteen wins. Okay. And then six so overtime still, wins. And so we're still under years. 500 for regulation wins overall. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, of course. Of course. This team, man. This yeah. team. Oh. Um, I just wanted to highlight a couple players as well before we kind of get into, I think, the big news of this game, which yeah. unfortunately has to be the big news. But um, I, I just know it's kind of overshadowed a lot of other things that have happened in this game. So it's currently we're trending it. on Twitter. Yes. You, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to highlight a couple players here. So Max Jones got a goal in this game, the uh, the, the first goal, the tying goal, I suppose. Um, so one goal on six shots for him, and yeah, he was just kind of all over the ice. Had a very solid game. Like he, he's, it was his normal physical presence and and grinding it out. But uh, six shots, he was really feeling the offense, I guess, and then it, it paid off for him, and he got the tying goal there. So that was that was nice to see. I definitely don't mind seeing more offense from Max Jones because he does have that touch. He just like kind of chooses or is told to play a more grindy fourth liner mm-hmm. game. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Max Jones did. Uh, yeah. Pretty decent in this game. Expected goals of point uh, four there. And mm-hmm. I'm just taking a look at where he was for percentage for the game. Yeah, sure. Uh, he was. Where is oh there you, kind of middle near the top there uh yeah. fifty six point uh fifty six point six percent is that in all situations uh yeah all situations okay there. I, I do have his five on five numbers because I was gonna highlight uh, somebody else oh, with perfect this, but he's uh, at five on five thirty eight point eight four percent um expected goals percentage so uh not fantastic like he's kind of bottom of the pack um b- between both teams at five on five but. Um, mm-hmm. but still like he had a solid offensive game. I don't really expect much defensively from him. So, yeah. And it's not like he was playing like, uh, like, a, like he was suddenly getting put on, uh, um, like special teams. Like he played three yeah. seconds shorthanded, which you're assuming is a line change getting ready for five on five again yeah. or something like that. So yeah, exactly. But yeah. Uh, and then the other player I wanted to highlight and normally we like to shit on him, but I, I, just to contrast it, I like to highlight it when he does actually have a solid game. Um, just to give credit where it's due. Uh, John Klingberg with two assists in this game. So one on each of the two Ducks goals. They were both primary assists. Um, he finished the game as a plus two, so wasn't on the ice for the Coyotes goal. And uh, played th- 23 minutes and 18 seconds. So that was pretty solid. Um, the the one knock I'll give on him was two giveaways and only one takeaway. So like I mean, negative one, I guess, in that stat. But the two giveaways I wasn't super happy about, like he gave the puck away once 
in overtime, which led to the phenomenal glove save by not even glove save arm, just sp sp yeah, sprawling kind of save the, by Gibson the, in overtime. The cuff of the glove. Yeah, uh, I, off the line. Yeah, yeah. I texted you like "fuck fire Klingberg into the sun," and then literally <laughs> seconds later, I was like, "Holy Gibson!" Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I guess his one takeaway directly led to the game winner, so sort of made up for it. But like, it, it would just kind of be nice if you just didn't give the puck away, John. <laughs> and, like, and and it almost cost us the game, like directly. So, yeah. Uh, the only guy that did worse in this game in terms of uh, giveaways, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, when we were talking about it, leads the team in giveaways. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Trevor Zegris, uh, yeah. who, yes, did score the overtime game winner, and mm -hmm. that was fantastic. Um, and like, it's, it's not to knock him down on it. Uh, yeah, goal, three shots. Um, but yeah, three giveaways in this game. Um, but, uh, man, that guy's got to stop taking penalties just in general. Oh, yeah. There's, um, like he's, he's a great player and he'll become an even greater player, mm -hmm. right? Like that, I, I don't think anybody's arguing that, but he does need to, how do I look back at Nazem Kadri? Right, how Kadri, yeah. Kadri got into a lot of penalty trouble and even suspension trouble because of his immaturity. Just, right? just a lot of like times where he put his team at a disadvantage yeah. because of his antics. Yeah, kind of, kind of yeah. went too far that kind of thing. So last night with Barrett Hayton being on the ground and giving him that cross check to the back. Yeah, that's a, that that was a play that um, I, I was trying to keep an eye on the game while I was working last night yeah um so i saw the replay of that though and that's a yeah mm. that's that's a no-no you don't yeah. need to do that that's okay I, i'm sorry i just i know we're transitioning to that but i just yeah. had one more thing i wanted to say about klingberg just okay be, i know it's a <laughs> it would be a perfect segue i, yeah, I know it would it, be but it. okay i just wanted to bring up this stat and then we'll get back to it so john klingberg right. this is his five on five um expected goals percentage so he's i guess fifth on the team with a 58.25 and in comparison to some of the coyotes players not great but I did just want to highlight defensive pairings in particular. This Vakanine and Klingberg pairing actually w was really, really solid. Six, just shy of sixty-two percent on the, um, or for the expected goals for at five on five. Second on the team behind a Benoit Beaulieu pairing, which yeah, they're not playing top minutes, but like that I, pairing I would not worked. have pegged those two as yeah, that pairing yeah, like those, those are. Good pairings. I own it, and Vakanine is a good, like, solid stay-at-home defenseman. So, kind of a all right partner for Klingberg. And I guess maybe that was the theory coming into the season was you, you have that as your second pairing. But with yeah. Vakanine and out early, it made things tough on Klingberg. I don't know. And then you know Fowler Kulikov way down here, but they also played tougher competition. I don't know. It's I'll take that one with a grain of salt for now. But yeah, Klingberg's numbers pretty decent in this game uh, and again just wanted to highlight that give credit where it's due and mm -hmm. i'd be surprised if we saw that you know the next game and like it's very inconsistent with him but it'd yeah. be kind of nice so to yeah it would be see um, him do that but okay sorry now we can I'll, go back actually, to two. Oh, no, sorry, go let, for me, it. let yeah. me dive just a little bit more on that pairing so yeah they yeah, played yeah. 925 together five on five um yeah their on ice expected was great at 1.05 um their on ice expected against uh was the highest on the team though at 0. 0.65 so they mm -hmm. the the way that they play is very offensively driven extremely yeah. offensively driven so you're just sure hoping that. that that pairing i feel like doesn't get caught in the back end mm -hmm. however though they uh only had seven shot attempts against for the entire uh for the entire game like yeah, yeah. again like nine nine and a half minutes but seven attempts against when they generated 24 mm -hmm. like tw sorry 20 like attempts for yeah that is so pretty they, damn good actually so like they played I, oh sorry um, and, and, and we're on ice for uh for a goal there so yeah so if they played about nine and a half minutes that's 16 percent of the game coyotes had how many shots sorry uh well that was uh shot attempts let me see oh that was shot attempts okay uh on ice shots on goal against five they had as a pairing okay and then so the coyotes had what did they finish with 
and 34 i think shot yeah uh, shots on goal yeah um so yeah given their ice time like they should have i guess only allowed just over five which they did so yeah it's it's kind of right where it should be like it's not anything too yeah. egregious but yeah so that's good yeah so the um, hope is that that pairing does continue to work so that there's a bigger return on john klingberg <laughs> exactly exactly yeah <laughs> and that way i can get my mcdoubles when both he and shattenkirk are traded <laughs> oh no shattenkirk's just gonna still gonna get a better return but i was like did he even play in this game but he didn't we'll, no, we'll talk about uh, later but yeah so um yeah okay now we can kind of back go zegris. back to the whole zegris <laughs> okay. thing yeah what well, you were we, we left off and you were talking about that cross check that he gave to barrett hayton after yeah. hayton took so... the high stick so yeah, because I was making the comparison to Nazem Kadri, right? So just the, mm -hmm. the maturity of Kadri over the years, right? That lessened overall, right? Like the stupid penalties and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm really hoping that that's going to happen for Trevor Zegers, right? Like for a guy that's as yeah. skilled as he is, he doesn't need to be doing what he's doing. It's mm -hmm. the same kind of thing that I was even talking about for Brad Marchant, right? He's not the guy that needs to be doing the stupid shit and trying to get under people's skin and that kind of thing. Go out there and score. And, yeah. and score points, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if if I had one criticism of Zegers's game is yeah he, he has to mature mm -hmm. and quit taking the dumb penalties because well, which we, yeah. we see it fairly often. Uh, I mean, we talked about that on our uh, New Year's resolution episode. Was just you yeah. know just just focus on the game. I, I'm pretty sure that's I, I think that's something that you had brought up potentially. I think that, that's what you had said for Zegers. I don't totally remember, but I, I know we definitely have talked yeah. about it. So, Or maybe it was at the halfway point because he was... It, it might have been the halfway point. Yeah, because yeah. we looked at penalty minutes. But um, one thing I will kind of say in defense of Zegers, in that specific situation, yeah. the cross-check, um, well, a couple things I'll say in defense of him, is Henrik also kind of gave him, Hayton, a bit of a shove, like just seconds before. So like, I don't, I don't know. like Which I also don't condone. No, but Henrik's but, was a lot less egregious. We'll say. Well, it, well, because he didn't have a stick, so yeah, he literally but, just kind of shoved yeah, him. Yeah, like, was like I get out a, of here. Like, there's a reason that Henry got nothing and Zegers got two and a game. Ten minute misconduct, or, or ten minute misconduct. Because he, or yeah. was it listed as a? It, it oh, can't yeah, have been no, a game just, just because a he scored. Yeah. He, he scored. Yeah, the, sorry, just it's just listed. So. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, it's all good. Um, but so um, so like that. Shove from Henrik also maybe kind of made the cross check a little awkward for Zegris on Hayton, like made it look worse than it was because he was like getting shoved a couple times. So like, I, like, like you said, we're not condoning the Henrik shove too, but also that does just happen like all the time. Whenever a player goes down and the mm -hmm. other team thinks, oh, you're fine, like get up, quit being a soccer player. Like they always give him a little yeah. shot or like that even was... if there's like a net front battle, like and both guys fall yeah. down, the whichever guy gets up first just like immediately cross checks the other guy like between the pants and the yeah Ho um, hockey hockey the, can, the shoulder pad the ho chest protector Sorry. Yeah, yeah an element of hockey is definitely who can get away with the most yeah right like refs aren't going to see everything right and obviously we know that there's some and they're not going to call are, everything even if they see it too so. yeah so there's some things that definitely should be called uh the Zegris was definitely one that should be called. I I don't disagree with the penalty. Yeah, that that should e all. that should be two minutes every single time. But if if that's all that happened in that play, then nobody really bats an eye because it happens all the time. Players do that kind of chippiness, and sometimes they get two minutes, sometimes they don't, and it's yeah. whatever. Like it's we're never going to eliminate that from the game, and it's not worthy to like string a guy up by his balls for that so it's but you know obviously there's a little more controversy around this whole play um between stetcher who was standing up for hayton and mm -hmm. trevor zegris and we'll preface this by saying it's like pretty much all speculation at this point yeah and, and that's it's never I... going to really be confirmed but like yeah we, we, we're still going to speculate on it and it's yikes we'll say that <laughs> yeah so it's so just to just to refresh everybody's mind zegris gives the shot to barrett hayton um i forget who else came in but barrett uh gets up as well goes at zegris you got a whole scrum going with everybody uh from both rosters and um but there was something 
in particular said uh, by Trevor Zegras to uh, Troy Stetcher that just sets Stetcher completely off. Just like like looked on, like, like he had like he had chaos eyes. Like he looked like yeah. he was ready to murder somebody. Yeah, and this is where it gets to the pure speculation. A lot of people, especially on Twitter right now, are going with and mind you, it does. It can look like that. I'm not a great lip reader, so that's why I'm prefacing this with it does yeah. look like this, but um, it, it does look like he's saying something to the effect of like your dad's up watching or something like that as he's mm -hmm. like pointing up to the sky, yeah. um, which for context, uh, Troy Stetcher's father, uh, Peter, I believe uh, yeah. is his name. Yeah. Um, had passed away in uh, June of 2020 there just uh, like as I think it was like just before the bubble for mm -hmm. 2020 happened. Yeah, um, I, I have I pulled up an article for that, too. And because I, I thought there was a little bit more and why, like, people actually know more about this is when the bubble started, Troy Stetcher um, scored the game winning goal in any, game any one point, against St. Louis and he up. pointed up. Yeah. And like kind of like dedicating that goal to his father. Um, and. And then they have the Canucks Twitter, I guess, um, in this article to have it that um, Troy Stetcher uh, took his father's necklace and hung it or hangs it in his stall every mm -hmm. game. So like, yeah, it was like a big thing. And it was like the first game after that when uh, he was. Yeah, when, when the playoffs started, when he was back in Vancouver there. So, yeah, the other thing that it does look like it seems like he could potentially be saying is more like you're like washed up kind of thing. Like I, yeah, I've, I've seen I'm not, that I'm one not, too, but... I'm not going to lean one side or the other. Hate me for it. If you want, I'm not going to lean one side or the other though, until hmm. we have something factual as to what was said. Right. If we even get that, but right. Because yeah. you can, you can read somebody's lips for one thing and it can be something completely different. Right. Yeah. And mind you, like I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. Social media, though, likes to blow things out of proportion, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and so, also, like, when one person says something, it's like, oh, it looks like he says this, then everyone it, can kind of pick out and it's like, oh, really it, it does look like he said that. You're right. Yeah, like, it, exactly. it can kind of balloon there, so. Which, yeah, so I, I don't think we're ever going to get anything official on this unless, no. honestly, I feel like the only way that we do is if there's an interview with Troy Stetcher about what happened. And, and he says, this is what was yeah. said. And then obviously Zegris is going to get the question. And I don't, I don't know. Is this something you investigate too? Like if you're I, the I NHL, like for a suspension? Of, I do kind of wonder just because of the reaction that you got from Stetcher. If it was something leaning towards the, you know, the, the passing of his, of his father, mm -hmm. that's a completely appropriate reaction. By stature, yeah. By stature, yes, a hundred percent. And I'm oh, saying that absolutely. as somebody who has lost a parent, I mm -hmm. would feel I would do the exact same thing, if not probably more than stature, actually. So, so like, if the refs weren't there, stature might have just seriously messed Zegris up. Like there was, yeah. It's like the the ref did a or the linesman, whoever it was, did a fantastic yeah, job too. of keeping those guys from, you know, well, not those guys, stature from beating the piss out of somebody because he was fired up so yeah now so like in saying that again i'm not leaning one side or the other i would if it's possible i'd like to know this is where like it's it, this is one of the kind of cases where i do wish that everybody was mic'd up actually mm -hmm. for like for like legal like in terms of uh, like hockey legality for like uh, legal reasons for suspensions hmm. or that kind of thing right especially yeah. with um a lot of the stuff uh over the last well i mean not over the last while but like you think of just like uh even like racist remarks or anything like that like hmm. but even just down to something like this of like personal attacks and uh you, you don't know it, you might even be able to consider it a gross misconduct depending on what was said right yeah exactly there might be yeah. more than what the camera caught we we don't know mm -hmm. right um, yeah. that is and where like, I, like, I, I yeah. do wish that we had all players mic'd up for, yeah, for legality reasons. Yeah. Um, for entertainment value as well, but that too. yeah, it is also to protect the, 
I don't want even want to say protect. Well, protect the players, I guess. But like, I don't know, just protect the integrity of the game, I guess. Because like, there's like like you said, there's been times recently, like over the last couple of years, where there's been potential racist remarks made and or like homophobic ones. Like that's still been a, a thing, and it's been suspend suspensionable like players have been suspended for it before like yeah. both of those comments because they cross a line and like yeah the there's a chirping is always going to be in the game and that's and that's fine you know if you're even like one of those old school guys where it's like oh back in my day like people would you know have heart attacks if they heard some of the shit that we would say on the ice so it's like yeah i'm sure like we would if yeah. that happened now but you know it, times are different like you, yeah you can still chirp and you can still give a guy a hard time and say you suck at hockey like oh it's like say hi to your sister for me like th that kind of shit like the, yeah those chirps i think are like fine but there is lines you just don't cross and if that's what zegris said that's up there maybe not as egregious and i'm not i don't even want to like say like oh there's worse things to say than like all that kind of stuff but it, it's up yep. there with like you know racist and homophobic remarks like it's a personal attack on yeah on somebody's personal life like not just like how they are at, at hockey like it's not about the game at that point so yeah exactly if if it does lean into more of the personal attack angle um then you you know what a hundred percent that April eighth game against the Arizona Coyotes, Trevor Zegers better have his head up, and we we've talked about this before of just like in the context of hockey even yeah um we we've talked about it between you know Zach Cassian and Matthew Kachuk a few years ago of uh, Calgary yeah. and Edmonton and that kind of thing, be ready to answer the bell, mm -hmm. if that is what happened, be ready to answer that bell in that game, yeah the. Only thing that I am unsure of, and I just want to have a look at the timing of it all. Okay, so with so this was this all happened thirteen thirty seven into the second period. So with the two minutes and the ten minute misconduct for Zegers, he wouldn't have returned to the game until about half, or until about five minutes into the third, the third. period. Yeah. So there there was an intermission time for everybody's tempers to cool off and i'm sure potentially the coaches too to say we're in a tight game let's like not deal with it let's not do anything dumb let's just mm. calm down and focus on hockey for the next 20 minutes 15 minutes and ended up being 22 23 whatever but so i'm sure that conversation happened in both dressing rooms but at the same time if stetcher was that fired up and probably talked to his teammates about it like this punk ass bitch said this uh, and his teammates would have rallied behind him because that's how teams are. Mm -hmm. Then I, I feel like we would have seen like either guys taking liberties with Trevor Zegras, like making his life a living hell, like along the boards and yeah. in front of the net, like just cross checks galore. And like someone would have put like, th th this is not a, a soft team in the Coyotes. Like they have Zach Cassian, oh, yeah, they, yeah. Um, yeah. Troy Stetcher himself is like a monster um i'm like just to name a couple guys off the top of my head um yeah like valamaki i think is a big guy um you, you probably know more about him nate but yeah uh younger guy there but and i don't think he's overly fought too much okay um, but, but like there's i don't know i feel like the they would have made zegris answer the bell already but unless it was like a oh J uh, jake jack jake mcbain i think is his first name i don't remember he's a bigger guy but like i feel like yeah. they would have done that before unless there was a message from um andre turnier head coach of the arizona coyotes saying like if anybody fights zegras and puts us at a disadvantage for the rest of this game then you're benched for the rest of the game and you're healthy scratched until yeah, it's, like next week kind of like there would have been that kind of message maybe that would have deterred the players but i don't know yeah that's yeah that's one of the only one of the two reasons i could see for not having something happen when segris was out yeah because of like 
you'd kind of expect that to happen if that's yeah. the case. Mm -hmm. Or it was that it that isn't what was said. Again, it's it's pure speculation. It's people are this is what they're grabbing onto right now and are getting upset about. Yeah. Um, which again, if this is what it is, that's totally valid then. That's mm -hmm. fine. Right? Yeah. Um we just don't know. So Yeah. Um if, if it comes out that he did say that, yeah, I lose respect for Trevor Zegers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? That, that's a line you don't need to cross. And I hope he even with even without it, I, I do hope that Zegers does mature more. Mm -hmm. Right. So like I've I've been on quite a few times saying like he does ride that line of confident and cocky. For sure. And yeah. there there are times that he crosses that line for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is definitely one of them, right? He's he's still like chirping from the penalty box and that kind of thing. It's like, no, dude, like you're in there for a two and a ten. This is the time to shut the fuck up. Yeah. So um yeah, or it's that, you know, that isn't what was said. And that's why kind of thing. I yeah. Yeah. I don't I, know. I hope it's I hope yeah. it's that one. And like it was still something that just fired Stetcher up and yeah, uh, another kind of way if, because if it is if it is the hey it's a tight game let's not deal with this now mm -hmm. definitely be on the eye uh, or keep your eyes out for that last game between these two teams on April eighth. Yeah, for sure because that's not something you forget no matter how long. No, yeah, absolutely. The, so it, like if is, so if that is what happened, yeah, retribution will be had. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, and I'm not going to feel sorry for Zegers for it no if, if that's what was said yeah he, he's got to he's got to answer the bell he's gonna, yeah. yeah he's got to atone for it so yeah. the the other thing because i i tried to i watched the clip this morning of it again like probably 20 times just trying to yeah. like read his lips and I, like i had the volume cranked just trying to see like if i could hear absolutely anything, anything. yeah but like, like even you, i've been like scrolling yeah. through twitter like trying to like just yeah like see find yeah anything on it yeah but and just like just before you can really see Zegris Zegris mouth what looks like um hey your dad's up there watching or or whatever it was yeah um just before that it shows a clip of Henrique and McTavish just kind of standing and watching everything going on and like they, it just looks like they're watching it and then like both of their eyes kind of like dart to the side where they're like oh shit like yeah like they both they just get this weird look on their face like i don't agree with him saying that but like yeah. did, he's did my he just, teammate did, did so just, i'm not gonna like just say that yeah yeah it's just like a e, this i'm not gonna defend him i'm not gonna get involved at all just so like but i don't know if it was just like yeah. more so of again like a, so again if it is crossing that line though be ready for the ducks not to maybe stick up for him as much yeah like though when it comes to that game in particular that specifically like no Henrik's not going to take that fight for him sort of thing. But like if yeah. he's just receiving cross check after cross check and not like answering the bell traditionally or like being forced to answer the bell traditionally, then like I think Henrik would stand up for him and be like, okay, like either fight him or leave him the fuck alone or you got to answer to me now. Like I, I think Henrik would still do something like that or like any of the other guys. But if it's when it comes down to no, we're throwing hands because of this is what the comment actually was. It's mm -hmm. it's all Trevor's egress. Yes, yeah. and that's it. And I, I think that's fair. I think that's re reasonable. So yeah, I think so as well. Yeah. Uh, to, to to unless you have anything more to add to it, um, to wrap this up, uh, just came across a tweet here from uh, a few pucks short, uh. The Trevor Zegers, Troy Stetcher lip reading situation is the hockey version of this and then has uh, the is the dress black and blue or gold and white. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, because I mean, because really like it's kind of yeah. Like there's like multiple videos of like you're going to read like you're going to hear something and mm -hmm. if you read something along with it, it sounds like that. But then if they change it, it sounds like this. Yeah. Right. Like it, and it's all kind of mental. So, yeah, if you go into each time you're watching it thinking in your head like your dad's up there watching yeah you're gonna mm -hmm. see that quite a bit but if you see it as something else then you're gonna see that a little bit more right which is mm -hmm. why for again for now i am staying down the middle that might if you want to roast me for that that's fine but as i've done for a very very large bulk of this show mm -hmm. i prefer to 
go on fact yeah right? exactly. as much as much as possible there, there's speculation mm-hmm. and that kind of thing which is what we've spent the last 20 minutes talking about yeah. right but until we hear something definitive i'll give you both sides of it yeah I'll, you know I'll, even... I'll, I'll, I'll give you i'll give you yeah. both angles whether we knew or didn't yeah even even if the or, roles are reversed yeah. like and we were say we were doing an arizona i would show give you rather the than a ducks one it, yep. yeah I, I would as well like until we know for sure like i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna quote i guess cancel zegris or or whatever like yeah but i'm yeah, like I'm not going to defend him to the ends of the earth because like, you know, yeah, it does look like he says that. So it's entirely possible. I'm not going to say there's no way he would say that. Um, but I'm also not going to say, yeah, no, that's that is what he said. Like, let's get him the fuck out of here. This kid should never play in the NHL again. So like, I'm yeah. not going to react extremely until we know. Um, but yeah, I do just hope just to wrap this up for me. I do just hope that if that is something that was said, um, the NHL does a very quick investigation on it because it, there's no and reason for it to be drawn one. out and yeah. a legitimate one because there was tons of ears around there was zegris there was stetcher there was at least henrik and mctavish barrett yep. hayton was there and you know another coyote or two probably as well and then there was at least one referee directly between the two yep and there was probably the other referees what else would they be doing they would be around there too so there is tons there's at least Taking out Zegris and Stetcher, there's probably at least 10 other people around, like within earshot, to hear exactly what was said. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I I think that if that is what's said, then somebody would say something and a suspension of a length to be determined would be handed out, I think. Yeah, and... One thing I do agree on, though, is like if there is suspension or that, that's not. That is not what is going to flip his mentality. No, right? It, it's going to be getting his face clocked in, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. At the at the end of it all, uh, Trevor Zegers over his two and a half seasons with uh, the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, Hockey fans have determined that that is the new Corey Perry. Just how oh, yeah, exactly. the Ducks. <laughs> yeah, no, it, this is a hundred percent the second coming of Corey Perry, where yeah. he plays that super high skilled offensive style, but he also just is a pain in the ass to play against, and always finds yeah. a way to get under somebody's skin. He's the he's the blend of Perry and Getzlaff, like the perfect blend. Yeah, exactly. So and. So like, cause there's always those guys that like talk a big game and chirp and then like, they've just got like stone hands and can't fucking skate or shit. Like they're literally yeah. just a, a fourth line plug for most of the time. But if you have the skill that Zegers does, I think you have a little bit more leeway on like being able to chirp. Cause you can chirp guys and like, then, then what do they do? It's like, oh, you, you can like, if Zegers only said to Stetcher, oh, you suck at hockey, you're washed up. What's Stetcher going to say to respond besides just like give him the stinky glove? Because it's like, yeah, he can't say you suck at hockey. You're washed up. Like he's literally 20 years old and just like the talk of the NHL and known yeah, for un- doing one of the not- most exciting moves in the league. Right. So like it's, you, you can talk a bigger game when you have the skill that Zegris does to back things up. But again, yeah, can't and, cross I a mean, line. So <laughs> yeah, like, like Stetcher is not a whole lot older. Like he's 28. Yeah, exactly. Like he's still oh. pretty young, and I mean, he's a defenseman, is he not? Yeah. So like, it's a they, they play very different styles, right? But mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, hope, hope obviously again hoping that's not what he said, but if he does, if that is what he said, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not defending that. Yeah, he he said oh. something enough to. And I don't want anybody. And... and I don't I don't want anybody to think that I am defending it. First yeah. of all. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Like like yeah. I said off the top. As somebody who has lost a parent as well, I would be irate the same way, if not mm. more, than Stetcher was. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure I have in the past, actually. Yeah. So, so this, uh, so yeah, two minutes for the cross check. Of course, you're gonna hand that out. The ten minute misconduct, like I don't think you get that for the cross check. And with how irate Stetcher was, and then the fact that he got that ten minute misconduct, it was listed as part of the cross check, like as part of the rough. It was listed as was that. it? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't 
yeah, the, the I don't NH think you had NHL... that out just for the cross check. Like I, I still think that he said something that was bad enough to warrant the misconduct, whether it was, um, like about it, whether it was something that crossed the line or it was just, you know, Hey, maybe you could just shut your trap and just go to the box. And then he didn't. So they're like, okay, another 10 minutes for you. Um, like it could just be that, but I don't know. I, I just don't see them handing out that 10 minutes for the cross check. So, um, I'm taking a look here right now. Rule 22. Um, is this is misconduct, misconduct? Is misconduct penalties? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, just kind of reading through it here quick. Uh, so we're goalkeepers yada yada shorthanded um misconduct penalties says for abuse of official no infractions uh reference table nine summary of misconduct penalties on page 144 okay get scrolling <laughs> yep <laughs> um table nine summary, summary of misconduct penalties uh, banging boards with the stick uh, in protest of an official's ruling, continuing or attempting to continue a fight, deliberately breaking stick or refusing to surrender stick for measurement, deliberately throwing any equipment out of the playing area, remaining in the referee's crease, fighting off the playing service, inciting an opponent. So that, so okay, th might that be yeah. there. Um, Yeah, using profane or abusive language, though from what we can gather, there wasn't that. It wasn't, wasn't that, yeah. The context of it. Um, yeah, that's... It's at least written by the NHL currently mm -hmm. as um, misconduct against Barrett Hayton. Like okay. Trevor Zegers misconduct against Barrett Hayton, which is why okay. I'm I'm yeah. I'm going by what the NHL has currently. Yeah, yeah, no, fair. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I don't know. You can, like, you can kind of I guess list it as what you want, but I guess you could, like, if you were the NHL rep, you could say, oh, ten minute misconduct for, um, Zegers against Troy Stetcher. Yeah, and then people would be like, okay, the now we the know, so. the you could even like just looking at the wording of it of um inciting an opponent mm -hmm. because that cross check led to what was everybody separated and mm -hmm. cooled off led to everybody really quickly getting together and like everybody's involved yeah that's where your misconduct could come from yeah because of the act mm -hmm. so which i i would say it was an egregious enough of a roughing penalty that it would warrant that. So uh, I guess, yeah, yeah. You, you, you could make the argument for yeah. it for sure. So, yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to wrap up with a couple quick news bits here. Uh, unless you had anything else about this game, but I think we kind of covered it all. Yeah. I th okay. think we did. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Okay. Yeah. So a uh, quick injury update. Uh, Kevin Shattenkirk didn't play against Colorado or Arizona with a lower body injury as we kind of mentioned earlier so don't know timeline for him to come back but 2 and L since he will went out <laughs> just saying who's just got saying. the better value who's got the better value <laughs> I don't know we'll see <laughs> both, both these guys suck but which one sucks less <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's gonna be the argument basically yeah from right last episode for the rest of the season or I guess until trade deadline yeah. or whatever happens to these guys. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's the only injury update we really have there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I guess let's do this other. Well, no, let's keep it in. Well, I don't know. What do you want to do? Do you want to do uh, this one first, Nate? Or do you want to talk uh, this one? Uh, let's do the first one. First just kind of get it out get of the way, it, and then it. we can we can end it on a high note. Okay, sounds good. That. That's a good plan. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So there was a report that, well, it's kind of come out on various platforms. I heard it on Thirty Two Thoughts, the podcast. You had heard it first um, 
with this article and then seeing that it was on 32 thoughts uh no 32 thoughts first actually oh you saw it there first oh okay okay so either way uh but apparently bally sports uh who is the has the broadcasting rights for uh the anaheim ducks games really all of them um or most of them anyways and our Um, national broadcasts on espn and tnt yeah. yeah um as well as various other teams that we'll get to a little bit later but uh bally sports is nearing bankruptcy which is uh not great for <laughs> them and uh, especially because they currently cover 12 nhl teams and they also do some basketball and baseball yeah, ba- i believe yeah basketball baseball football if i'm not mistaken Injury football as well yeah that i'm not sure on but i mean really the we care about the hockey, but either way, this is like a yeah. big, like sports network and entertainment group. So it's uh, it's owned by Diamond Sports Group. So Bally Sports mm-hmm. is like the regional broadcast, I guess. But let's see yeah. if it how... WNBA as well. So like we're getting into the. It's not oh, okay. just the men's; it's it's women's sports as well. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I see. So yeah, they have it separate um, into into like various so it's like bally sports west bally sports southeast bally sports yeah. san diego and like all of those and then within each of those it like covers all of the teams like within that oh here we go oh team yeah. by network do we want that? uh there's also like professional obviously but also college and high school yeah. uh, games are covered by bali mm-hmm. yeah so they kind of cover a little bit of everything honestly mm-hmm. just scrolling through it like they cover a lot of teams yeah poker even <laughs> yeah <Tennis. laughs> american ninja warrior um the u.s army bowl so anyways lots of different stuff um so f- them going bankrupt is a pretty significant deal across the sports world but um specifically as it relates to the nhl a lot of well not a lot of a majority of their revenue up until very recently when they started selling more advertisements within games on jerseys mm-hmm. on the boards all that kind of stuff helmets um the tv network deals made up pretty much all of the revenue for the nhl and contributed to and dictated what the salary cap was going to be from season to season it was essentially how much money can we get from these tv networks for the broadcasting rights for these teams okay mm-hmm. add it all up and this is what our salary cap is total yeah essentially plus you know various marketing deals jersey sales all that yeah. kind of stuff other but, other forms of revenue but yeah mark uh, the tv deals are a, a massive implication into it yeah so with one of the major ones you know one that covers 12 of the 32 teams um potentially not going to be yielding any revenue if bally sports does declare bankruptcy yeah then that could have serious implications on what the salary cap is and i mean obviously they'll replace this deal eventually because someone has to cover the broadcasting rights like you can't just not broadcast these games i mean you can but like <laughs> you're gonna that's, find someone else that's, so that's not a good uh it's not a good strategy for uh continuing to grow the nhl game um yeah. Sorry, but did you in, go through all of the teams? That... I, I didn't. No, I just kind of went okay. through the leagues. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Finish, you your, the... finish your thought, and then I can I can read who's all affected. Oh but... yeah, I was, I was just going to say like obviously they'll have another uh, network step in to take over this deal, but in the short term it's like okay we were expecting this money now it's not here we can't raise the salary cap until yeah. we get another deal and we don't know when that's going to happen so this is the salary cap for now and then maybe we'll see what happens with the TV deal that they'll probably sign September first or whatever if the if yeah. Bally Sports declares bankruptcy like soon, like within the next few months. So, yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to go through the 12 teams in the NHL that are listed here, they're, I think they're all American teams. Uh, yeah, they are. So, there is the uh, LA Kings, the Anaheim Ducks, obviously, uh, Arizona Coyotes, the Dallas Stars, the St. Louis Blues, Minnesota uh, Wild, the Detroit Red Wings, Columbus Blue Jackets, Nashville Predators, Carolina Hurricanes. Tampa Bay Lightning and the Florida Panthers. Those are all the 12 NHL teams that would be affected by 
losing their broadcasts with uh with with Bally Sports there. Mm. Um and uh there was an interesting note as well from uh this article that we're looking at here on Maple Leafs Insider from Evan Dofler. I hope I'm saying that right. Um of those 12 teams, only two of them are considered revenue generating teams, uh, which are okay. the LA Kings and the Detroit Red Wings, which I'm kind of surprised actually for Tampa not being a revenue generating team considering. Yeah. It depends on the definition because they were yeah. not a revenue generating team for a long time. So if they're looking like over the entire course of the franchise, their recent run over the last few years is probably like you know, got them like a net zero or close to in terms of like long-term investment. But like over the yeah, last few right. years, you can't tell me that the Tampa Bay Lightning haven't been a revenue generating team this yeah. year and last year, and but individually, but over the course of the whole lifespan, I guess. I, I could see that. Yeah. Um, but taking a look outside the NHL, let's take a look specifically at Bally Sports uh, SoCal which is, you know, the hub mm. for the Anaheim Ducks yeah. that also affects obviously the LA Kings, but affects the Clippers. Um, it affects the Angels as well, which I'm not massive into the Angels like specifically, but I'm trying to get more into the MLB in general. Uh, and I was seeing a lot of uh, Angels fans not being pleased that uh, their owner is going to continue to be the owner. He was looking into selling the team. Mm. Um so that's going to be interesting as well with this. This is how this all plays out, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to dig up more into that uh, personally. Uh, the Rams as well for the NFL and uh, does include the San Diego Padres from uh, Valley Sports San Diego side. Yeah. Um, and San Diego but gets kind of all enough, so. those teams as well, right? So yeah. Um, yeah, so like outside of the Ducks, that is a lot of major teams that are about to be affected by potentially losing their broadcasts uh their broadcast groups yeah I, I did a quick count there's five nfl teams um one of them well you said the, the la rams the tampa bay buccaneers who obviously have uh god i'm blanking on his name Why? tom brady thank you yeah i was like <laughs> who is that most famous nfl player in modern history like what maybe has yeah. maybe has him I, I think i saw an interview the other day that somebody had asked him uh you know, like kind of what his plan was. And he yeah. got a little pissed on there. Oh, really? <laughs> just like, if I had a fucking idea, I would tell you it. Yeah. <laughs> or like, or everybody would know what it is. So, yeah. <laughs> and and the, the the interviewer was just like, I sense I touched a nerve there. And everyone's, I'm just like, no shit. <laughs> yeah. The, um, they've got like quite a few NBA teams too, like, yeah. uh, LA, like bigger ones, like the Clippers, the Heat, um, the OKC. Thunder, um, Cleveland, like oh, quite a few MLB teams like that are so like, and, and the NHL is obviously like the smallest revenue or smallest like of the big four, I guess, like in terms of revenue that they bring in. So like with p potentially all four of the big four sports leagues needing to find new networks for various teams. Mm -hmm. say, it's gonna be a shit show. Yeah, yeah. Like, so say like NBC is like, okay, we'll pick up some of the slack um, on some of these. So they'll sign the NFL deal, they'll sign the NBA, they'll sign the MLB, and then it's like, okay, we would like to sign the NHL deal, but we just spent money on three other deals for yeah. the bigger sports networks. So like, we don't really have a lot for the NHL to give. So like, it's 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 not even just that. Okay. We just got to find a, someone to sign basically the same deal and then the salary cap can continue to be where it is. It's like, no, like there is now going to be less um, networks available to take on these, all of these teams across all the networks. So there's just going to be less money to be spent on TV deals. And the NHL is going to get the short end of the stick because they are the smallest of the big four. Mm -hmm. So um, I am trying to, double check here really quickly yeah because there's just one team that stuck out but i'm just double checking if there's any of the others here um but let's take a quick look just at the nba for yeah. a second um because the just as an example the dallas mavericks are uh the 
10th uh, highest valued team in the M- uh, in the NBA at okay. uh, 3.26 billion dollars. Jesus. The um, sorry, that's is that the team that's owned by the Shark Tank Dragons Den guy? Uh, Mark Cuban, yeah. Mark Cuban, thank you. Yeah. Um, that Blanking team on all is, the names that, today. That team is a is potentially about to not have a TV deal outside of the national broadcasts. Yeah. Like just for yeah. like one team alone, that is devastating. Mm-hmm. For all of these teams, though, and what's going to happen to all these leagues, and yeah, especially for the NHL, they're probably going to be the odd man out for a lot of yeah. these. Right. Oh, so for in, sure. In, yeah. in a lot of these markets. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting and definitely something uh, to keep an eye on here. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that kind of wraps up the news. So, as uh, Nate said, let's wrap things up on a high note. And uh, if you're used to the Monday episodes, you know, you're like, hey, there's, there's been a segment missing here. What's going on? <laughs> it's a, overall been a very positive episode, but like, where's where's my favorite segment? You know, um, but don't worry, it's coming. Where so, is it, Carter? Where is coming. it? It's here. It's here. It's don't here. Worry. The package has arrived. It's, it's been out for delivery all day, but it's arrived. Finally, Finally. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the last stop on the on the truck. Really pushing that uh, between eight a.m. and eight p.m. thing, and it's seven fifty nine p.m. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's weather delays. You know, we can. Uh, that's what, what can you do? What can you do? snowmobile because we're in canada it's good <laughs> yeah or or polar bear just have your mail delivered by polar bear <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we're not adding to the stereotype <laughs> uh but uh you know we've we've talked previously on the show um about the e-bugs and how the emergency backup goaltenders and how much of a fantastic story they are we had thomas hodges at the very end of last season for yeah. the anaheim ducks so that was exciting and well uh, it wasn't totally like an emergency backup situation. It yeah, wasn't not, really an e-bug, but... Yeah, not technically classified as an e-bug. Yeah, but still an emergency situation. Uh, just a, overall a feel-good story coming out yeah. of Edmonton um, with a player by the name of Matt Berlin of the uh, University of Alberta Grizzly Bears, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Is that their team? Or Grizzlies or something? Or Bears? The, it's something uh, like that. Golden Bears. That's what it is. Golden Bears. Golden Bears. Yeah. yeah. Um, quick hockey DB. Look up here. Um, oh, no, it just has... Uh, it just says UVA. Yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. the, I think it's the Golden Bears. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, but yes, the so Edmonton native uh, playing for University of Alberta, which is in Edmonton. Uh, he was signed on an emergency basis to an amateur tryout deal uh, just hours before the Oilers Blackhawks game Saturday night uh, with uh, Stuart Skinner being out with an illness and obviously not able to back up. Uh, Jack Campbell was going to be the starter anyways, I believe. Um, but they you, you obviously need a backup goaltender to sit on the bench. So they signed this guy to an amateur tryout to just be the backup. Um, I, it sounds like he had practiced with the team here and there, like, you know, off season, um, or like training camp or just preseason practices, all that kind of stuff. Um, so like, he's not like a stranger or anything like that, um, to a lot of the guys, but, uh, with the Oilers being up seven, three, with a few minutes to go, Matt Berlin was, uh, put in net for the last two minutes, 45 ish seconds of the game. Uh, uh 26. I got the exact number. Two twenty six. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, where he faced one shot off uh, from Caleb Jones and made one save on it. So, yeah, and and overall, just a cool opportunity because you know they didn't have to play him. It's Campbell was fine. It was yeah, he was willingly pulled, and it's not because it wasn't an e bug situation. It's not like okay, is that like that's kind of weird? Like why? Like he was actually the backup for that. So like, mm. it, say like even if it was Stuart Skinner, like easily could have just put him in but obviously you're not going to do that just for a couple minutes yeah. at the end of the game but they wanted to give this guy uh, 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 i was going to say kid but he's 25 like he's kind of our age so he's not really a kid <laughs> um <laughs> but they gave this guy just a kind of probably a once in a lifetime opportunity to yeah. you know play a couple minutes in the nhl and face an nhl shot and make a save and yeah 
It, it's it was just stuff. super cool. Like they didn't have to do that. Like he was probably content. Like well, he was content to just sit on the bench because he was like. I mean, expect- wouldn't you? <laughs> that, that's yeah, a right? cool experience. <laughs> yeah, the, he said um, in the post game interview uh, that I watched this morning um, that he. Uh, he was texted by the goalie coach, like, hey, can you be the e-bug for tonight? We just need someone. And he was like, okay, yeah, I'll sit in the stands because he did that, I guess, in the bubble. Uh, he was the yeah. e-bug. And then... He in... also did it last season, it says here in this article. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, a few hours before puck drop, he got another text saying, like, oh, hey, actually, you're going to be backing up tonight. Like, can you sign this contract? Like, Skinner's not ready to go. And, like, obviously, we can't, we don't have time to call someone up from Bakersfield, right? Yeah. So just... You want to sit on the bench? He was like, "Okay, sure. Like, this is going to be really sweet. Like, this is going to be like it was already kind of a cool experience." And then, mm-hmm. I guess with like about seven ish minutes to go, uh, the Oilers coach Jay Woodcroft went up to him and was like, um, "After like first whistle after the three minute mark, like you're going, you're going in. So like, go get ready." And he just like laughed and was like, oh, "You're funny. Like, thanks." And he was like, "No, like I'm I'm not joking. Like, yeah. go get your helmet and stretch. Like you're going in." And he was like. Oh, oh, oh I, I do i do have the quote here if you want yeah okay yeah, um yeah so matt had said uh i thought they were joking but oilers coach jay woodcroft uh said that at the th- uh at the three minute mark be ready to go and that at the first whistle after the three minute mark i was going in so i went into the back did a couple of stretches took a couple of breaths and i was in uh, my heart was pounding for the four minutes once he told me and then once i got in there and got a drink of water i was all right <laughs> yeah yeah so it's good yeah and you you could just tell like he was just like ecstatic to be there and, yeah um yeah like it, the the shot wasn't like a great shot like it might have been going wide or something anyways but like yeah it and still I, counts I think, as he, a save, I think so. he said that even when he was doing his uh uh his like after the game uh interview with yeah um, i think it was scott oak yeah scott oak it was? yeah yeah he's, oh. he's even like watching the screen he's like i think that shot was going wide but <laughs> yeah I, yeah i don't know the, the angle they showed i was like i don't know like it might have yeah i might or not so i don't know but still a save regardless got got to feel that so pretty cool um and then also i guess this came from um from the players like it wasn't a coach initiated thing it uh it was initiated by i guess well jay woodcroft said connor mcdavid was the guy was like hey we should put this guy in and then woodcroft went talked to some of the other players at the tv timeout when Campbell came to the bench was like, Hey, are you okay if we do this? And yeah, they were all like, yeah, let's do it. So it was, yeah. it was very much a player's thing and the coach backed them on it. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I do have that quote as well from Woodcroft here um, yeah. saying, first of all, it came from the players. We wanted to make sure we did it in a respectful way because we have nothing but respect for the Chicago Blackhawks, their players and their coaching staff. Uh, mm-hmm. But we just wanted to give someone an opportunity they'll remember for the rest of their life. Uh, I was proud of our team that they came to that decision uh campbell came to our bench at the tv timeout we told him what we were thinking and he was all on board uh he was so happy for him and the opportunity presented itself uh that's what we did and good on the young man for going out there and making a save and i'm sure he'll carry that memory with him for the rest of his life um i think uh as well in that post game interview uh berlin was talking about how like he and campbell have known each other actually for quite a few years mm-hmm. um and, like have trained together in that kind of thing so yeah um him and him and there's, Skinner, there's a little actually, bit uh, or Skinner, yeah. Sorry, not Skinner, uh, Skinner, not Campbell yeah. Skinner. Yeah, because um, they're both they're both from Edmonton. Um, yeah, and then so they they would have played together on some sort of junior team. I don't know which one. Um, uh, they probably would have played against each other in the WHL. Uh, oh, Matt that's Berlin, true. Yeah, yeah. Matt Berlin played for uh, the Spokane Chiefs as well mm-hmm. as the Seattle Thunderbirds. Yeah. Um, and a and a stint as well with the Kootenai Ice there. Um, yeah over a few seasons but hmm. i thought he did say he played with him but it, yeah i don't know it was probably like one of those old like minor hockey like yeah played together when you were 15 and like bantam or whatever yeah exactly but, um and then the the shot that he stopped off of caleb jones as well um he's he actually had played against jones in the whl because jones yeah, played with, I, think that, portland, yeah. <laughs> I think it was portland is where jones is from i did look it up but i think so yeah i got it here yeah sure so uh one of the few american whhl teams so it's uh definitely in that area as well uh yeah jones played for the portland winterhawks yeah okay so yeah um but then also played for the oilers for a little bit so oh that's right yeah 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 i forgot about that too i shouldn't (laughs) yeah um so yeah overall just a very cool situation again something they didn't have to do but um Just a 
yeah, just just a very this week we got a very feel good, a big energy move. Yeah, and uh, I had one. No, I don't have it. What else you got? <laughs> I don't know. It's I always in the threes. One. It's always in threes. It is. Um, good on Connor McDavid for because I know there's been questions about his like actual captaincy leadership. Mm-hmm. Uh, so suggesting to throw in a college student into an NHL game is a big energy move, and one that worked out well. Yeah. Um, and uh, how about this? If Berlin probably uh, never plays another second of NHL hockey, he ends his NHL career with a 100 save percentage. A big energy move. To a T. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was one thing, because I remember there was kind of questions last night of how were the Oilers allowed to do this? Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, it, yeah, you're right. It's because he was signed for an amateur tryout and not as an e- he wasn't the e bug for that game. He was mm-hmm. the actual backup for the game, yeah. Um, which is why they were able to do. It. If it was an e bug situation, they wouldn't have been allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, funny enough, Chicago uh, did try to do that a few years ago. Um, and uh, I think oh, it was, that's right. I think it was Chicago versus Philly, if I'm remembering this uh, correctly. Um, and it was something that they had as an e-bug before, like sitting on the bench with them. And uh, they tried to get him into like the last couple of minutes of a game. Um, yeah, because the one goalie went down, so the backup went in. But because but the backup didn't get injured, like the yeah. the, the first backup. Yeah, so for an yeah. e-bug to go in, both goaltenders have to be injured and not able to continue playing. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I know the Blackhawks had tried to do that. Um they are kind of like the rest were like, no, he, he, he can't. And um, the goalie was like, oh, my arm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was I think that was one time where both teams were like, come on, can we bend the rule here a little bit? And yeah. uh, I think it was in Philadelphia. If I'm if, again, if I'm remembering this correctly, even uh, so even Flyers fans are booing <laughs> for yeah. not having somebody else go in net. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see. What that guy's name was, everything like that. Yeah, to find yeah. I, I remember the story, but I don't remember uh, anything else about it. Yeah, I'll I'll have to find. Uh, it was it was a YouTube thing uh, clip that I'd seen of like the two or three times that this guy had uh, been a part of it. So oh, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll take a look at it. Yeah, if you if you find it, then I guess you can throw it up on our Twitter at yeah. Quack Report Pod. So That's if you it. guys do want to find that and you're not following us on Twitter already, make sure you do that. Um, you can also do that, uh, follow us, that is, on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch at Quack Report Pod. And Nate, if uh, people want to say, how dare you not defend Trevor Zegras, our lord and savior, the saint of the Anaheim Ducks, um, where, where can they uh, rip your part there? Uh, first of all, you can shove those thoughts up your ass. Second of all, if you really <laughs> still feel the need to tweet at me for not taking, for, for sitting on the fence, we'll call it that. Uh, yeah. you, if, you, if you really feel the need to... Um, I guess you can do it at uh, Tate Namas on Twitter, T A T E N H O M A S. Yeah. And uh, I'll just which, continue to wait for something definitive, I yeah. guess. Which so, I don't think any of our fans would do that because yeah. we've got some good listeners. But if we have just know. anybody else who yeah. wants to, because it's, of course, like outside of Anaheim majorly that's blowing this up uh, to the to the way that it is. So, yeah, but. exactly. Um, And, you know, for me, sitting on the fence too, at Carter underscore Potts, P-O-T-T-S underscore 97. You can tweet at me all you want. I probably won't look at it for a week and then I'll just be like, oh, well, it was a week ago, so whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you that from experience. That's, that's yeah. exactly what Carter does to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, obviously Ducks on their bye week, so won't have a game for basically a full week. Uh, next episode, we'll, we'll find some Ducks stuff to talk about and a little bit of Unplugged maybe. Um, next Monday, we'll probably Ooh, have the All-Star yeah. game to talk about. A little bit so you will fill some time we'll still have episodes they just uh won't be about games specifically so yeah yeah should, should will... i should i put it out there that we're going to talk some some new fallout boy on wednesday well it's already out there so there you go sure. new fallout All boy right. wednesday for a live well, episode yeah. uh, we'll see you guys it. then and go decks go i guess l- later go pacific go pacific